I have the feeling that maybe some of you are wondering why it is I've been saying all along that with velocity-controlled instruments, we don't have the ability to change the dynamics after a note is played, yet here I am creating dynamic changes in velocity-sensitive sounds. So, like, what's up with that? Well, as I explained earlier, dynamics are a change in both volume and timbre simultaneously. Here, we're only adjusting the volume. And here's an example of the difference. Here I've created a decrescendo using a cinematic strings cello sound, and by now you probably know that with CS2, the mod wheel controls crossfading between sample layers. So here I have this slow diminuendo, starting with the mod wheel all the way up to give me the fortissimo dynamic at the top, and I slowly rode the mod wheel down through the lesser dynamics to niente. Now watch the frequency analyzer to see what's happening to the brightness of the sound over the course of the decrescendo. And now for a comparison of a diminuendo simulated solely with a change in volume. This time I'm going to start with the mod wheel up at the beginning of the note to establish the fortissimo dynamic at the very top and then it's going to maintain through the course of the note. And then I'm going to use MIDI volume to simulate the decrescendo. And again, keep an eye on the frequency analyzer to see what's going on with the brightness content in the sound. So the reason the second example doesn't sound as authentic is because the bright timbre of the fortissimo sample maintains itself through the course of the decrescendo. I'm going to play those examples back to back without the frequency analyzer so you can focus on hearing the difference. So indeed, it does make a difference to the sound if, during a decrescendo, the sound gets both lower in volume and duller in tone. And the opposite is true. It does make a difference if a sound gets both louder and brighter as it crescendos, as opposed to just getting louder. But this is exactly the situation we run into when working with non-crossfading sounds that we want to impart dynamics to. For example, if you were to use the velocity switching string sound that I used in the previous tutorial and you wanted to create a decrescendo from forte down to niente, you'd have to start the note with a high velocity to trigger the forte sample and then create an artificial diminuendo by writing the volume down. And again, the frequency analyzer showed us that the frequency content remained constant over the course of the note. Now, it makes perfect sense that if you want to start a note loud and have it diminuendo, that you have to start with a high velocity. But if you want to create a crescendo, then your starting note has to be at a dynamic level that's loud enough so that the timbre is right for the point of the crescendo that you arrive at. So even if you want to create a crescendo from niente, you have to start with a loud sample at a low volume and then raise the volume, like this. But let's put authenticity on the back burner for a second, because if you're working with sounds that don't crossfade and you need to impart dynamics to those sounds, my advice is don't let that stop you from using CC7 to create the impression of the dynamics that your music needs. Because when it comes to samples, sometimes the samples with the right vibe, the right feeling for the part, may not have crossfading capability. 
Or maybe you're starting out doing mockups and you're not ready to invest in the bigger, badder, or specialty libraries that provide cross-fading between sample layers. In which case, what do you do? This is one of the few options available to simulate dynamics in sounds that don't offer any other kind of dynamic control. And it can sound really good. And it's done all the time, so a little bit of fakery can go a long way. I mean, after all, here we are making orchestral music without an orchestra, so everything we're doing is fakery to some degree or another. What's real is the music that we're trying to write and the musical emotions we're trying to express within the limitations of the tools we're using. Now, I did say earlier in the course that the brain isn't easily fooled into thinking that a sound which changes in volume alone is the same as a sound which changes in volume and timbre simultaneously. However, in the right context, the brain can be fooled into thinking that it's hearing something musical. And that can happen if the crescendo and diminuendo gestures you create have tasteful musical shapes that are reminiscent of how they'd sound for real. Now, in closing, two things. The first is that I'm going to be showing additional techniques for imparting expression into your mockups using CC7 a little later on in the course. And now the second and final thing for this tutorial I'm sure that some of you are wondering why I haven't mentioned CC11 as a way to change volume or as a way to change timbre and volume at the same time. After all, CC11 is called MIDI expression, and isn't that what it does? It changes the volume and the timbre at the same time? Well, this is a very common misconception, which I'm going to clear up once and for all in the next tutorial.